And they're off. Pretty decent break up on level terms. Most of them. It's called the Sport of Kings, and racing at Goodwood on the Duke of Richmond's estate in southern England has royal connections that date back centuries. Horse racing's been going on for over 200 years, but uh, it came about as a result of the. Uh, um, the first Duke of Richmond, uh, being the illegitimate son of Charles II, uh, having a fascination for hunting. And he would come down to Sussex and hunt with the Charlton hounds, uh, which were kenneled here on the estate. The highlight of the racing calendar here is a meeting called Glorious Goodwood. Never mind all the talk of double-dip recessions and belt tightening, on a festival afternoon, the crowds still flock here to enjoy themselves. Attendances have remained robust in recent years, with around 100,000 racegoers over the five days, paying up to $100 a head to attend. And it's by 100-year-old royal decree that there's a more relaxed atmosphere here than at rival courses. It was King Edward VII who referred to it as uh, a garden party with racing tacked on. And, and of course, it was his influence that led to Goodwood being regarded as a more informal and socially relaxing sporting event uh, as compared to, say, Royal Ascot, where people are dressed in their morning suit and, and, and their, their top hats. And he's really trying to stretch the field. Richard Hughes has got into top gear on Camford Cliffs, and here Richard hasn't really... But Goodwood and other courses have suffered with a reduction in corporate hospitality, reflecting less money in the sector and a more selective approach to business entertaining. Trainers too are feeling the pinch, finding fewer owners wishing to reinvest at the yearling sales each year. And revenues into the industry from betting are in decline, causing prize money to come under pressure. But it's not and, all uh, bad news. The rear of the field, so encompassing has been sent on and leads by about three lengths from Rip Van Winkle in second place. In I'm third. pleased to say that right now, uh, field sizes, that's the number of horses running in races, seems to be holding up remarkably well. And of course, down at the trackside, there are many people hoping to cushion the effects of the economic downturn. The bookies are hoping for a good day, and so are the punters having a flutter. But they're not the only ones having to weigh up the odds at the races. Canford Cliffs again, Richard Hughes, consummate at the line. When a winner gallops across the line here, its value can immediately double or even treble. There can't be many assets these days which turn a profit like that so quickly. And the assembled worth of the bloodstock is phenomenal. The thoroughbreds running here add up to between 40 and 80 million dollars, with perhaps half that amount concentrated in one race, the day's main event, the Sussex Stakes. They're all proven Group 1 horses. I mean, we'd be looking at sort of 20 to 25 million dollars worth of bloodstock in that one race. So, you know, they're very valuable assets. The dramatic escalation in a horse's value after a win is based not only on future prize pots, but for enhanced stud fees. The stud fees are very high, 100,000, 200,000 in some cases. And if the stallion turns out to be infertile, then that's a huge loss. So, you know, it's, it's big values. And as the saying goes, values go down as well as up. And in this business, just as fast. If you've got blood stuff, you've really got to consider the unforeseen situations to make it worth your while, to cover your, your initial outlay, really. Now, first time out, the horse stumbles and unfortunately has to be put down. You've effectively lost your investment. That's a risk covered by specialist insurers like Markel International at Goodwood today, celebrating a year since launching its equine and livestock division in the UK, in an industry worth around $400 million globally. The London market is basically the global centre of, of the insurance market, and so we don't just write business in England, we write business all over the world. Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, all over the States, South America, Japan, and all over Europe. So, you know, we get a very broad spread of business because most of the equine insurance comes into the London market. But of course, this being racing, some are so rich that despite the massive sums and risks involved, money really is no object. Some people view it as a commercial operation and other people's it's much more of a hobby, they've made their money elsewhere and it, it's just a hobby for them so they don't sort of you know, feel the necessity to insure. A lot of people are that wealthy they don't need to insure their horses but 
for, like I say, for the bloodstock value and, and the, the side of after racing when the horses are retired, I think it's, you know, it's important to have your, your horse insured. Um, you know, for the worst case scenario. The near side rail attracted to you, Morticia tries to burn. Still, with owners wealthy enough to write off several million dollars when a horse takes a bad stumble, the sport of kings looks set to gallop home comfortably for years to come. Morticia closing with every stride. They hit the line very close. Morticia on the near side of Quella.